European foreign ministers voiced broad support for Lebanon, backing the policy of dissociation over the Syrian conflict, national dialogue over security issues, and assistance for refugees. The remarks came from the foreign ministers of Sweden, Poland, and Bulgaria in Beirut during a string of meetings they had with President Michel Sleiman, Speaker Nabih Bede, and former Prime Minister Fuad Senyura. The ministers said they would carefully monitor Syrian incursions into Lebanese territory and also reaffirmed the European Union's backing of a peaceful solution to the Syrian crisis. Despite the unrest, the message from the foreign ministers who will report back to the EU was, hold the course. Future News got an exclusive with Bulgarian Foreign Minister Nikolai Mladenov. We're working very actively with the Syrian opposition um, and trying to support the efforts that everyone else is um, undertaking to make sure that they have a credible transition plan um, for the future of Syria. I think that's a very important part. And secondly, as part of our European Union discussions, um, we want to be uh, more actively engaged with the neighbors of Syria. Um, this is why we're here in Lebanon today, uh, to make sure that uh, the neighbors of Syria have our full support um, in alleviating the effects of the crisis uh, there um, and making sure that it doesn't spill over to the rest of the region because there's a substantial danger of that. You talk about the Syrian opposition and the importance that that is in resolving the crisis in Syria. However, one thing we've seen in the last couple of months is that the Syrian opposition is very divided. So what are your comments on that? I know that's a, that often people are very critical of that, um, but I actually think it's a, um, a great advantage um, and an asset for an opposition that in the middle of all this uh, repression and the revolution that is happening in uh, Syria um, is able to um, hold elections, elect new leadership, have discussions with different groups, work on formulating uh, consensus, um, and continue in an extremely constructive way to develop um, ideas of what should be happening uh, for the future of Syria. It's an extremely tough job. And let's not forget that for um, just about 50 years, um, people in Syria have been denied the opportunity to have uh, political rights or to express themselves freely. Um, so there's a lot of learning to do. Uh, Bulgaria um, and other countries in the region who have gone through transition um, uh, on our own um, and who have learned our own lessons from this transition um, are ready to help them and to work with them every single step of the way. We can't do it for them. They need to do it uh, with our support. The Arab League UN envoy Kofi Annan just spoke in a press conference in Geneva, and he said that both sides of the conflict should come together and nations with power should help out as much as they can. So my first question is, what do you think about what he said? And the second question is, what about the issue of Iran in the Syrian crisis? Does it play a role at all? Let me start with your second question, okay. um, which I always get annoyed with, I'm because sorry. no, no problem at all. Because I think that when we talk about Syria, we should not try and complicate it further by talking about other issues and other countries. Syria um, is complicated itself enough, and when we have any discussion about the future um, of Syria, of how to end the violence, of how to have a political process of transition, yes, we need to listen to everyone. We need to hear the voices from the region. We need to hear the voices coming from Europe, from America, from the rest of the world. But what we really need to do is hear the voices coming from Syria, um, what the people there want and how they want to organize their country. And this is where, if we center the process there of our discussions, we will be much more successful um, in terms of achieving uh, both an end of violence and a political transition. Um, on your first question, um, I think that ultimately, uh, the authority to use force in any country lies with government, with the legitimate government of a country, um, and usually there's a, a command structure involved in the army. So the responsibility for the use of force primarily lies on the governments. Um, in the case of Syria, what we've seen over the last uh, many, many months now is increasingly heavy weapons being used against the people of Syria, and that is completely unacceptable. One does not fight uh, uh, an insurgency um, or a, a, a protest march uh, with artillery. Now that, that is wrong and it shouldn't be done anywhere in the world and we need to stand up and say it very clearly. So yes, uh, uh, indeed, everyone has a responsibility not to escalate the violence, but the primary responsibility of that lies with the hands of